Here's a topic I might have a bit of insight into, and this is from Game Rant, and it's the common response I get about people talking about what Mass Effect should be. It's like, just, just redo what Mass Effect 2 does, or did. So this is Mass Effect 5's best bet is to follow Mass Effect 2's lead. After the receptions of Andromeda and Anthem, the next entry in the franchise should look to Mass Effect 2 in correcting the course. Now, if something's popular, that means you have something that works for people. You just have to use the same formula, switch up the elements, uh, give a good reason why things are happening the way they're doing, and you could pretty much make the same experience. Now, should you do that 100%? Of course not. You have to do something unique and different. But the general formula of Mass Effect has always been similar to, let's say, KOTOR. You have a series of planets you have to go to uh, along a main plot line, and you go along. And you could complete them in any order you like. Combine that with a dialogue wheel of choices with an ethical framework of good and bad, and that's pretty much Mass Effect. So, yeah, you can replicate that formula and get along just fine. With Mass Effect 2, though, the problem became the execution of the main plot, its relevance, its logic, and the meaning found therein. And we find out there isn't an, any meaning, really. It's just sort of random series of events. You have this guy who's telling you to go build the team and go here and go there without any rhyme or reason. And it's pretty loosely put together. The good part of the game are all the side characters, all the side stories, which happen to contribute to a Choices Matter ending, which, as contrived and illogical as they were, did actually do something, did actually amount to something. So there are some formulas that do work in Mass Effect 2. It's the details of the main plot that doesn't, and how that connects with the side characters is questionable at best. So... Recent releases from Bioware haven't arguably lived up to expectations. The Dragon Age, Mass Effect, and KOTOR developer has released some of the best RPGs out there. Okay. Uh, definitely some of the more entertaining ones out there. Uh, with reports of Mass Effect 5 in development, there's a lot riding on the future of Bioware. Yeah, Bioware is not looking too good nowadays. It's just not being very attractive. Dragon Age 4, Mass Effect 5, and Anthem Overhaul are what's known to be on its slate. If Byra can seal the deal, perhaps the sins of Mass Effect Andromeda and Anthem's release can be forgotten. Uh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to forget what happened to Bioware and why it's been gone a steady decline. And if they keep producing rushed things with bad production, bad development, um, crunch, you name it, all the bad things that happen at, at other studios happen at Bioware you're going to get another failed or lackluster performance in the sales department, even if you copy the formula of Mass Effect 2. So, uh, yeah, Mass Effect Andromeda sucked for obvious reasons. We're not going to get into that. But you have to follow what works, and that was Mass Effect 2, to popularity at least. I would say it's very similar to the concept of Mass Effect 1, but just given a bigger polish, a bigger budget, more effort put into it, but without actually thinking about the story. So yeah, you have individual stories which are fine and entertaining and fun and interactive and all amount to some illogical ending. And that would be the climax of the story, but to get there was the problem. So the formula is fine. It's the story that goes with the formula that doesn't work. One of the praise aspects is the characterization and that stretch from the most minute NPCs to the most important. Um, characterization. How would I characterize the characterization of Mass Effect 2? There is certainly plenty of characters for you to experience. And there are elements they use within their environment, within their speech. But there's no real characterization I can think of particularly. It's more or less motives and reasons and goals. And then you happen to come along and then achieve those goals. And those journeys you go on with those side characters reveal more about them. Their backstories, what they want, what they're trying to do. That is what you got out of those vignettes. Characterization comes in the form of details about stuff. So let's say Zaid. He was highly characterized. 
his gun, his background, his story with Vito, those sorts of details. Grunt uh, didn't really have that. He was just this newly born character. And yeah, he's aggressive and he's Krogan. We're trying to figure out why he's feeling the way he's doing. We learned a little bit about the Krogan background as a result. So characterization, probably not the strong suit of Mass Effect 2. So the sentence continues to shepherd themselves. Uh, no, 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 no. They're, they're shepherds a brick. Uh, they have been a brick. They will remain a brick. Uh, unless you choose uh, the green ending, then he, then he becomes disseminated. But it's, <laughs> uh, no, th there's really no characterization to shepherd aside from uh, being aggressive with the renegade interrupts and being diplomatic as usual. So... Is there some character? Yes, there is, but it's all emotional and there's no real anything else. He likes to collect ships, he likes to feed fish, and that's about it. He likes to dance, I don't know. And to their companions, yes. There, there are some minor, there are some companions that do have characterization, for sure. Just not, uh, it's not a major focus of those vignettes. That's not the point. Fan favorites like Garrus Return, new characters like Thane and Jack had powerful stories. Uh... Yeah, they, they, they had drama. They all had drama. And each character's loyalty mission felt more than just something tacked on. Really, I felt like all the characters were tacked on. Even Morden's. Every single one was tacked on. That was the You could have made this game in a series of, of updates every month or every other month, however long it would take. So version 0 0.05, then 0 0.1, then 0.15, and then each new character would be a new vignette, and that would be it. It would be tacked on. It would change nothing about the main plot. So, no, these these things are literally tacked on. They sit in their little room on the Normandy, and that's it. You can go to talk to them if you want. You don't have to. So, no, they, they are tacked on. The only integration is the illogical ending of the suicide mission and how helping them gives them... I don't know, courage, more courage. You randomly get power-ups for your ship so it doesn't blow up when you go through the Omega-4. So it's it's illogical. It is, ta it is literally tacked on, some of those power-ups. It's like, oh, you just get this from Jacob. Oh, you just get this from Tally. It's like, why? <laughs> Shepard even came into their own more. Mm. Shepard was more expressive because of the interrupt system but essentially the same character, a brick, a, sh a soldier, a stoic dude or girl. That's it. As players dealt with the mysterious Cerberus, we didn't really deal with them as pretty much being told what to do. The Reaper threat, no. Unless you were playing one of the DLCs, no. There, there was no mention of a Reaper threat or any Reapers, really. Past friendships and so much more. Uh, yeah, there was, there was a few elements of past friendships, that's true. In short, it brought every character to life in the grand scheme of the story. Um, no, not in the grand scheme of the story. The characters were brought to life within their own stories, but not within the grand scheme and certainly not within the main plot. You could say a little bit about Morden and Miranda and Jacob because they were more integrated with the main plot, but only in small moments. So not so much. As well as a personal level, mm, no. Focusing on the companions who are often hit and miss in the Bioware games will help deliver a more Mass Effect 2 vibe to the next game. That's interesting because the reason why you play the Bioware games, whether it's the Dragon Age uh, fantasy style medieval games or the space ones, you play them for the companions. You play them for the side characters. And the main character you play is more or less a cipher that allows you to experience those other characters. That's kind of the point. And the beautiful thing about Dragon Age, whether you like the gameplay or not, or the story or not, are the companions. They are the shining beacon that keeps this franchise, or at least that franchise, up. It's the characters that have their comedy and have their dramas and their plots. So without the companions, these games would probably no, be nowhere near as interesting as they were. Which is really sad. If you take apart the main plot and you throw away all the main character, or sorry, all the secondary characters... Uh, the plot goes along just fine. You don't need power-ups to, to solve the game or get to the ending. Uh, in fact, you have to try really hard to fail. 
it's it's really hard to fail. You will solve the game, maybe one death here or there, but people want to get the most out of their game, and there's really no wrong way to do it. You will get everyone's loyalty eventually. So the suicide mission this is the climax of the story. So I'll give them that. Perhaps the most iconic moment of the franchise, the final mission. There, there are so many layers to it. Uh, there are. There are many stages to it, but it's illogical at best. At worst, it's a pile. It's a pile of crap. You don't know why things are happening the way they're doing. You don't know why certain people won't be good at certain things. Everything's under the hood. And that's a good thing in some cases because you don't want to know plus one to this or minus one to that, who you choose to do what. And that's fine. But it has to still make sense. There has to be an explanation. Why isn't Zaid a great leader? Why is Garrus a great leader? They should have comparable, if not, Zaid should have more experience. And if people want to follow Shepard and Shepard says you're going to follow Zaid, then he should be fine. And if Zaid is somehow screwing up, why did Zaid take a, a rocket to the face? Or, or Garrus, if he wasn't loyal? How did that happen? How does that make any sense? If someone's in charge, wouldn't someone underneath them feel the brunt of their mistakes or their lack of preparedness? Hard to say. But there's a lot of illogic in the suicide mission. Such as which companions Shepard is closest to, how players have prepared for it, and these decisions made during the suicide mission. One of the most grievous insults to a companion-oriented game is when the players end up tackling a huge moment solo, something so antithetical to the entire setup that it undermines the companions in the long run. Well, this is the whole problem with Mass Effect in general. You can only take two companions with you, and you're amassing a small army with you of, was it 12 people or 12 characters? It's like, why can't you take them with you? Why couldn't every mission be like a suicide mission. I know that sounds rather daunting and difficult to program and hard to plan, but what's the point of acquiring all these specialists when you, you're not going to use them? And in regards to the main plot, there's no reason to get a Justicar. There's no reason to have Jacob Taylor. There's no reason to have Tali or Legion or Jack or Garrus or, or Grunt, who is just along for the ride, really. You weren't even supposed to get Grunt, but hey, you got him anyway, right? Or Thane, or Miranda. It makes some sense with Miranda. It makes some sense with, with the Doctor. But other than that, you don't need anyone else. And they have their little plot moment, and it's gone, and it's forget it, like a MacGuffin. They're gone. You don't need them anymore. So integration with the story of all these characters has to work, and they treat it more like a piece of DLC. Imagine all of these characters, including Morden, as DLC. And it, the story makes much more sense. They are not integrated into the main plot. So he's saying the suicide mission is the absolute opposite of that. And yeah, that's when the, you get to use them. You get to choose how they're used. Uh, those you don't choose are on the sidelines. So you don't get to see them do what they're here for. The thing is, we don't know why they're here for. That's the problem with the main plot. You don't know why you have these people. It's because someone in writing thought it would be cool. Hey, let's have an alien assassin. Hey, let's have a, a friendly geth. Hey, let's have a, a really cool uh, warrior from a, a long-lived race. That's it. That's the only reason you have it. Wouldn't it be cool if... Wouldn't it be nice if every single character of these can be done away with in the main plot, including Morden? The worse players dealt with their companions, the more punishing it was. Oh, wow. Hey, Shepard, I want you to do X. Can we go do X? Great. Let's go do X. You do X. Wow, Shepard, I gain your loyalty. That's all there is. Doesn't matter how you do it. They always get your loyalty. Mass Effect, if Mass Effect 5 recreated a moment like this, where its storytelling and companion-based composition came to the fore, it would be big. Uh, yeah, I agree. It would be another big Mass Effect 2. Not a whole lot of games successfully pull off a suicide mission like this. And if there is anything, if not everything, Mass Effect 5 should replicate from Mass Effect 2, it is definitely this. I agree. I think every set piece, every major plot point, should be a complex, logical puzzle. And not to say a puzzle game, 
Although effectively that's what every video game is. It's just a bunch of logic gates and puzzles of how to do, how to get to Y and you can go to A to B to C. But if you could make a series of levels where you have to use this person's skills and that person's abilities and wait for this person to come back and you're, you're calling your companions, you're calling your teammates who are specialists to do a certain thing like a heist or hacking into something or destroying something, stealing something, that would be great. That would show the detail involved in all of these choices, not just from dialogue, but from the level itself. So you're, you're using the concept of choice and you're integrating that into a companion-based story or a secondary character focus of a story and you're the guy calling the shots. You're the guy saying, okay, now you move in, you do this. That would work fantastically. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of coding. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated, but it can be done. If you have the capacity to do Mass Effect 2, you would have the capacity to do a better version of Mass Effect 2. So I'm all for the formula of Mass Effect 2 and being replicated into the next Bioware title in space, whatever that might be. I just don't think they should drop the main plot. I think the main plot should be number one. I think the choice element should be number two, or if one of the major gameplay elements. And for God's sakes, give me a solid foundation of science fiction lore where the Mass Effect universe is not some retconned lore dump of contrivances where now guns work differently, the Mass Effect works differently, ships work differently, etc., etc. I want a solid, hard science story with all the aliens we know and love, all the technology we know and love, that's solid. None of these Thanix missiles bullshit, none of that crap. I want real stuff that I know, that works, and tell a story about that. Put us into science fiction realities we've never been in before, and how would humanity deal with it? That's all I want. Pick a formula, Bioware, pick the one that works, run with it, get a good writer, you should be fine. Thanks for listening, guys. Have yourself a great day.